Dreallday.com. Dreallday.com. Balloverseas.com. Let's ask the question, answer the question on the opposite end of the spectrum from my previous video. My last video, I was answering the question if you are an older player, whatever you consider to be older, can you still play ball overseas? The answer is yes. Watch that video if you didn't see it. This question is, can you play basketball overseas if you're a younger player? What if you're 18, you just graduated from high school and you wanna play overseas basketball? You think you could be Brandon Jennings, y'all remember him back in the day. Then it was uh, LaMelo Ball recently and the other kid, RJ Hampton, played ball overseas. Can you play basketball overseas if you're a younger player, you didn't play college ball, maybe you just wanna skip college for whatever reason. You don't wanna do the schoolwork, you didn't get recruited to college, you just don't wanna go through all that. You just wanna play basketball. That's all you wanna do anyway, so why not just get right to it? Can you do it if you're only 18, 19, whatever, with no college experience? Can you play overseas? The answer is yes. Yes, you can play overseas. But I, of course, have to let you know everything, all right? Because if that was the whole thing, then I wouldn't need to make a video, okay? Now, when it comes to players that age, of course, we are not talking about, let me be clear, I'm not talking about Europeans who are playing overseas at that age. I'm not talking about, like, Ricky Rubio was 15 playing for the first division team in his city or whatever league he was playing. He was playing at a, a pro-level team when he was only, like, 15, 16. I'm not talking about somebody from Europe because it's different for them. In Europe... A player gets identified or designated as a basketball player and they put them into a basketball program where like their life is centered around basketball they're basically living a professional life when they're a teenager and i know some of you americans are like man i wish they had that here in the united states maybe one day they ain't got it yet the g league is working on it but it's going to take some time by the time they figure it out all right your kids will be playing pro basketball so it ain't going to be you but understand what i'm saying here if like ricky rubio or Yao Ming over in China or like Dirk Nowitzki when he was in Germany and a bunch of other players. They're not the only ones, but I'm just giving them as, as, as examples. When you get identified from a young age as a basketball talent, like you might become somebody, they put you in a program and they start training you and all that from a very young age. So you got a lot of experience. But I'm talking about you Americans who don't have that. Here in America, you get identified as a good basketball player or you could play in this, this AAU team and this summer league and they'll make some videos about you on YouTube and you get all these followers on social media, but uh, you still gotta take your ass to school every day for eight hours and sit in that classroom and learn stuff that you'll probably never use in your adult life. Like, I'm just keeping it real with you. Y'all know, know I keep it real. But this is the system. And if you want to play college basketball, if you want to graduate from high school, you got to go through the system and sit in class for eight hours a day, even though all you want to do is play ball. I get it. Is it great? No. Is it ideal? No. Should it change? Yes. Is it going to change while you're a professional athlete during your window? Probably I'm going to say no, but it got to change someday. So maybe maybe it'll change for you. If it didn't change for me. I wouldn't bet on it changing for you. So taking this information right here that I'm about to give you. Here's the thing. You can get a deal playing overseas if you're 18, 19, whatever, if, let me tell you the ways you could do it. Number one, if you're super duper talented, like you're one of the top 10 ranked high school players in your class, like uh, let's say LeBron James, he wanted to go overseas, he could have went overseas. If they didn't have high school to the league in 2003, he could have went overseas. Or like LaMelo Ball did it, he went overseas instead of playing college ball. Who knows if he was even eligible for college. And the other kid who went to Australia as well. And now you got kids who are going to the G League's program, which the G League finally got that bag up. And they're giving these kids 500 grand. Well, for 500 grand, a lot of kids would have took the G League route. Now that G League got that money up, and now they're getting kids to go to the G League route. So that's working. Now for you, if you're not that, if you're not one of the top 20 players in your graduating class, and they don't know you like that, but you still want to go play overseas. You think you're good enough. You've just been overlooked. Maybe you had some issues. Maybe you didn't even play. Whatever's going on. Listen, I understand. That happens to people. Here are the things that could get in your way for playing ball overseas. Because the bottom line is this. that I want to make sure I say this. That I've said it before, but I'm, I'm going to say it over and over again. The number one key for you being able to play professional basketball is can you play? When you get on that court, can you play? Play. Can you perform on that court and produce the results that that team wants? If you can do that, are you eligible to get a job? Absolutely you are. Now, will you get a job? We don't know, but you got to be able to play to get a job. If you can't play, you ain't getting a job. I don't care what you do. All right, you can have you know, Magic Johnson and Michael Jordan as your agents. You ain't getting a job. You can't play. All right. 
or maybe you'll get a job because they pushed you through, but you want to sit on the bench. Now, here's the thing. When you're trying to get on overseas, let's say you're 18, graduated high school, and a team is looking at you. And let's say they like you. You go to an exposure camp. You show off your game. You're 18. You balled out. You dunking on people. You crossing. You hitting threes. You doing all your thing, and you just look like this phenom. People are like, damn, where did this kid come from? Why wasn't he ranked in high school? This kid can play, and they want you. Now they're going to do their due diligence. Like I told you, if you didn't see the video where I talked about college players, they're going to do their due diligence on you and they're going to look into your background. They're going to find out who you are, where you're from, what you've been doing, why your life is your life. Why is your situation your situation? How did you get to this point? And they're going to see that you didn't play college basketball. And whatever reason that is, maybe you just maybe you are a great high school student and everything. You got a 4.0. You just don't want to play college ball. You just want to play overseas. Maybe that's your situation. Maybe you messed up somewhere along the line. Maybe you didn't have the right test scores to play college ball. Whatever the situation, here's the thing that could keep a team from signing you overseas. All right, number one, you do not have a lot of basketball seasoning. The highest level of basketball you've played is high school. And high school basketball, like, um, you never know what you're going to get. You walk into a high school gym to watch a game, you don't know what you're going to see. All right, every high school is different. Every league is different. A league could be really good and high level players, and a league could be completely trash. And like anybody can go in there, average 30. You never know. High schools are, listen, I had teammates in college. <laughs> I played at a D3 school. I had teammates in college who were trash. Like they shouldn't even been on a college basketball team, period. But they averaged like 25 in high school because they went to this small ass high school in the middle of damn nowhere playing against a bunch of people who are worse than them. These dudes couldn't, shouldn't even been on the roster in college at a D3 but they averaged 25 in high school. I'm telling you that to tell you this. Teams can look at you and see that the highest level you played was high school. They have no idea if you played against anybody credible in high school. And you might not have played against anybody credible. I get emails all the time from players who say, well, Dre, I want to play college or pro ball, but I go to this small high school and nobody comes and watches my games. Nobody comes to the league and watches us play. Probably because you play in some middle of nowhere high school against some bum ass players and people assume that since you're playing against them, you're a bum too. You might be very good, but because you're playing against bums, they consider you to be a bum. This is what we call the law of association. This is how it works. You associate with bums, people are going to assume that you are a bum, even if you're not one. I'm not saying it is right. I'm saying this is the way life works. Okay, now, now that you know that, you could do something about it. Maybe transfer. Maybe you can't. But understand, when they look into your background, they see that the highest level that you played is college. Here's the problem that an overseas team is going to have with that. If they sign you, now who are you going to be playing against? You're going to be playing against guys who've been playing overseas for five years. You're going to be playing against guys who are coming out of a college program where they got taught you know, how to play structured basketball. College is probably going to offer more structure than high school. I don't care what level it is. And now you, you have none of that structure. You have none of that background. And we're supposed to sign you and expect you to do something on that court going against a five-year pro or going against somebody who just played four years of college ball. The problem that that team is going to have with you is that you're probably going to have a very steep learning curve in trying to figure out how to actually play structured, organized basketball. You're going to have a steep learning curve when it comes to coming to practice every single day and practicing hard twice a day, five days a week, depending on what league you're in, what team you're on. You're going to have a steep learning curve when it comes to just living your life. You're 18 years old. You probably never even lived by yourself before. Now you're living by yourself in a foreign country with money in your pocket. And you only work for two to three hours every single day. What are you going to do during that time that doesn't get you in trouble and it's not stupid? It's not going to make the team look bad. And it's not going to make the team have to watch you like they babysitting a kid. These are all things that they're going to be thinking about when they're looking at you, 18 years old. You never played any college ball. You never played anywhere with any kind of structure, with a coach, where you got practice every day, where your team is running plays, where you're dealing with other professionals. You've never been there before, but now they're supposed to sign you and hope that you don't do something stupid and hope that you learn how to play and hope that you figure out this learning curve at least sometime during the season so that their investment pans out and you actually become a good player for them. I want you all to understand, you high schoolers who are watching this, understand that there is nothing that you're going to do in high school. I don't care who your coach is. I don't care who the coach is. I don't care if Phil Jackson came and coached you. There is nothing you're going to do in high school that is going to prepare you for professional basketball. All right? High school doesn't prepare you for the pros. The only, that's why there are only a few players who go high school to pros and be successful. And if you look at the guys who did it, Kevin Garnett, Kobe, LeBron James, Tracy McGrady, who else? Dwight Howard. You know what all of those guys had in common? 
the guys who went from high school to the league and they were successful, you know something they all had in common? They were all extremely talented, number one. They were all very mature, number two. And they all were so physically skilled that even though they didn't have the the training, they did not have the training on the court to know what anything that was, they were going to expect in the pros, they were able to overcome that learning curve. They were able to shorten that learning curve because of their physical abilities. Kevin Garnett was a physical anomaly. How many Kevin Garnetts have we seen since Kevin Garnett? How many T-Macs you seen? How many Kobe's? How many LeBron's? How many Dwight Howard's have you seen? Not only one of each one of them. Is, is, you think that's a coincidence? Now you, if you ain't that level of talent, well, first of all, if you were that level of talent, you would already be what I said earlier. You would have been one of the top ranked players in your high school class. They would have found you. I don't care what school you was playing at. If you're that level of talent, they'll find you. All right, if they didn't find you, you might not be a LeBron or a T-Mac or a Kobe, which is not a bad thing, okay? I wasn't either. All right, not being a LeBron, T-Mac, or Kobe doesn't mean it is impossible for you to get a deal. All right, it doesn't mean it's impossible, but what it does mean is the team is looking at you like, all right, this guy's going to have to learn how to play basketball. He's going to have to learn how to run plays, learn how to deal with a coach, learn how to practice every day. These are the, all the things, again, that the team is thinking about you. Now consider who their, what their other options are. They're looking at you, and then they're looking at some guy who just played four years of college at a D2 or at a D1 or even a D3 who they might sign instead. Now they know that this guy is at least a little bit more physically mature, at least understands what it means to show up and practice every day. This player knows what it means to be in a structured environment and you know, follow a system and be disciplined and do all the things that they need to do every day. They know that this player knows that, but they know that you don't know that because you ain't played nowhere that you would have had to learn it. It's impossible for you to know it because you ain't never did it. You're only 18. And off the court. This is something that a team got to think about. What are you going to do off the court? You're 18. And any of you who's over 18, any of you who's 25 and over, imagine what you would have did. You sitting in uh, Greece, 18, with money in your pocket, and you only had to work two to three hours every day, and the rest of the time is yours to do whatever you want. Ain't nobody watching over you. Ain't no bed check. It ain't none of that. Ain't no supervision. What would you have done at 18? You probably wouldn't have wanted to been in that situation. You would have messed up your life. <laughs> you probably would have done something dumb because at 18, we're all dumb. So any of you who's 18 or younger watching this, Yes, I'm calling you dumb, and when you get to be 28, you'll realize that you were dumb at 18. You might think you're smart right now. When you become 28, you're going to look back like, damn, I was dumb when I was 18. And anybody who's over 18, you tell me if I'm wrong. Here's the thing. Well, I already told you the thing. I told you a bunch of things. You are going to have to really, really, really be super duper talented, or you're going to have to have some kind of system or structure around you that makes the team believe that you are not a stupid investment. And again, it's not even all, all about your game. You better have some talent. You better be very talented on court because that's the only way that physically you're going to be able to hold up against professional level players and players who have played at like the high, these college levels and all these things that you're going to be playing against because they could just physically dominate you unless, again, you're a T-Mac or a Kobe or a LeBron. If you ain't that, that's one thing. And the other thing is just the maturity. Another thing is just the learning curve. Like you're gonna have to learn how to play ball. You ain't never had a coach. You ain't never been on a real team. You ain't never had to learn how to run plays and sit on the bench. Probably you haven't done any of those things. And you think you're gonna just come play overseas? Now, how would you even get a team if we were to back up from even this? How would you even get a team to even be thinking about signing you? If you're 18, you just graduated high school, or 19 or 20, you all, the highest level you played was high school. You ain't played nowhere since. How are you going to get a team to even be thinking about you in the first place? How would a team even have you on their radar? Maybe let's say you went to an exposure camp and you did your thing at that camp to the point that the team is considering you. Well, first of all, how are you going to do your thing in an exposure camp playing against guys who are two, three, four, five, six years older than you, probably physically stronger than you, have more experience than you. Some of them played pro. Many of them have played in college. You didn't do none of that, but you think you're going to just show up at an exposure camp, walk in there and do something against dudes with way more years of experience, but probably much more physical maturity. They played at the pro level and you think you're going to just walk in there and do something? How? Again, this is my question. How are you going to do that? If you, at the highest level you played was high school, you think you could walk into an exposure camp in the summertime against a bunch of dudes who play D1, D2, D3, have two, three, four, five years of professional basketball experience, and you're going to get on the court with them and look like somebody who's capable of being better than them? How are you going to do that? If you can, here's my thing. 
if you're good enough to do that, uh, you should be ranked in your high school class. You should be ranked already. People should already know who you are. All right, you should be on the ESPN 100, whatever they call it. I don't follow high school basketball. Whatever they call that, you should be on it. All right, you good enough to do that, to outplay the pros and outplay guys who got four years of college experience and you only 18, 19, and you didn't play college ball? Again, I'm just trying to figure out how this even makes sense. If any of you is 18 and you got some scenario that makes this make sense, you let me know. You let me know down in the comment section. But I don't, I haven't seen it. And the rare exceptions being Brandon Jennings, RJ Hampton, LaMelo Ball, these two kids who said they're going to the G League is probably more by the time you see this. Uh, T Mac, Kobe, LeBron, uh, Kevin Garnett, Dwight Howard, whoever else came from high school to the league and actually had a career was good. Jermaine O'Neal, people like that. All right, if you that level of talent, they should already know who you are. All right, that kind of talent doesn't go unnoticed. I don't care where you play at. All right, you could be playing in the middle of no damn where. They will find you if you're that good. So since you're probably not and 99 out of 100 basketball players ain't that good, doesn't mean you can't play pro. Doesn't mean you ain't got a chance, but it does mean uh, you got to you know, snap about that dream of thinking that you're just going to walk on some court and look like a pro when you have no seasoning that would make you even anywhere close to that level. Hopefully this is a good uh, real talk for some of you younger ball players who want to just play ball overseas. I'm not telling you that you can't, but I am going to give you, I am going to tell you the truth. I am going to tell you the real, and I'm going to tell you what teams are thinking about when they're looking at you and considering you as a prospect or what you would need to do to even be considered as a prospect. They're not even considering you right now. That's all you got, just to be honest. All right, so what you should do if you don't want to play college or you can't or you're not going to, whatever the thing is, you, the highest level is high school, you got to go join some pro-am leagues like where there are some guys who can actually play. Go find some players who can play. Guys who are playing college or play college and guys who are playing overseas or played overseas. And you need to start working with them. You need to start training with them. You need to start playing with them. Not always against them, but with them so you can learn, talk, ask questions, listen, soak up game. From those guys, you can learn how to play. Because if you don't know how to play, you can have a whole lot of talent and not know how to play basketball. All right, some of you know what I mean when I say that. There's some people with a ton of talent, but they have no idea how to harness it and use it in a five-on-five -five concept where you can't just take the ball and go one-on-one -on -one all game. All right, there's only one James Harden. There's only one Allen Iverson. All right, overseas ball ain't nothing like that. I already made a video about that. So go find some people who are already in the game who know how to play and soak up game. Learn how to play ball. Play in some programs. Then when you're ready, invest in yourself. Go to an exposure camp. Go to an academy where you can learn how to play the overseas game, where you can get trained every day, where you can work with pro coaches every day, where you can play against pro level guys every day. These are the things that you got to be doing. And some of you might be disappointed in what I'm saying here because it doesn't seem like so such an easy one, two, three thing is everything's going to work out. Well, what would you expect? You're talking about trying to get a job and doing something that 99.9% .9 of basketball players never do. You think it's going to be easy just because you feel like you got a little bit of talent. Listen, everybody who has a deal overseas has talent. Every professional basketball player in the world has talent. So talent alone ain't enough. You're going to need a lot more than that. And hopefully this will open your eyes a little bit and be some, again, like the information that you really need to hear. I ain't always going to tell you what you want to hear, but I will tell you what you need to hear. Now, all that being said, if you don't have this book yet, I wrote this book. It's called The Overseas Basketball Blueprint. I wrote this book after going through a nine-year pro career where I came out of a D3 school that I walked on to. I had no connections, no prospects, no agents, no nobody knew anything. Nobody put me on any or anything. I put myself on and built a career out of it. I wrote this book so that you don't have to make the mistakes that I made and you know, go down the wrong paths that I went down trying to keep my career going or even just getting my career started. This is a 237-page book. I've already paid for the book. You ain't even got to pay for the book. All you got to do is take care of the shipping. Tell me where to send it. I will ship this book to you anywhere in the world. The link to get this book is balloverseas.com. It's down there in the video description. You'll also see another link down there to a downloadable free PDF. It is called 46 Things You Must Know About Playing Ball Overseas. You can get that one free to your phone right now. And then you can order your copy of this book, claim your free copy, tell me where to ship it, and this will be coming very soon. So get both of them, both of those links down below in the video description. Any questions or comments, of course, you know to put it down here in the comments section. And I got a lot more coming on this subject. You know, I tell you that every time because I do. I got a lot more coming. Trust me.
I'm gonna answer questions that you didn't even know you had about the overseas basketball game. Stay close, stay tuned, stay subscribed, and work on your game. Dre, all day.